So I know what you might be thinking, right? Joel clearly showed you that there is a lot of benefits to looking at this mRNA-seq-based solution over microarrays when you're going to do your expression profiling experiments. And he's alluding to things that I'm going to talk about now. How can I actually access this type of data? How can I get past that just regular differential expression workflow, and start to peek into some of these really interesting biological insights that he was able to give you a peek at? So that's what I'm going to talk about now. Before I get too far into that, uh, if you haven't heard about Golden Helix, let me give you a little bit of a background so you can know where we're coming from. We've been building uh, software for statistical analysis and um, really just comprehensive analysis suite for genetic data for about 13 years. So this is really where we come with a lot of strength. Um, Complementing that, we have analytical services, and that has resulted in over 500 peer-reviewed publications. We have customers all over the world, hundreds of customers, and we've been very uh, happy and proud to be working with Expression Analysis as a strategic partner and kind of putting together the solution. I think there's actually a, an amazing synergy between what they're able to bring to the table and what we are and the solution, that, and, and I hope you see if you use it, and as I can give you a preview of it, really ends up being uh, more than the sum of the parts of our collective experience. Okay, so here's a little bit of an overview. Before I kind of, uh, I'm going to give you a, a little breakdown of what this cloud-based solution that, that Joel mentioned is. I'm going to actually go through each of also some of the other tools associated with this. And before I do that, let me just kind of define the verbiage down here. So primary, secondary, and tertiary analysis. Joel alluded to this a little bit as well. So primary analysis we're defining as that creating of those base calls and those quality scores that are coming off of the, um, the sequencing machine. Um, this is all going to be well handled, you know, you would expect essentially to start here. You get your fast Q files. Secondary analysis is that single sample oriented workflow where you're taking that single sample, you put it through this pipeline to get that deliverable of we've, we've done the alignment, can do the quantification, there might be that variant calling, QC statistics, just giving you all that output that you can put in a pipeline and automate it. Right? Now you want to bring multiple samples together and do that sort of uh, experiment at the, at the level of, of uh, you might specialize to the, what type of experiment you're running. That multi-sample analysis we're just calling tertiary and we have tools for that because as you can imagine just getting that standard deliverable is not where we want to lead you off. So we wanted to build this solution in collaboration with EA that is comprehensively going to give you uh, the tools to get to that biological insight and we're not going to force you to use any of all, all, all of these tools. As he mentioned with translated cell files, you have a comfortable workflow you want to look at, but there's so much more to see and we want to make you sure that it's not a barrier to get to that extra information just because um, the complexity of, or the, the, the magnitude of the data might be in your way. Okay, so let's focus in on this, uh, this cloud-based solution. So why did we build this as a cloud-based solution? There's a couple key advantages here. Right? So if we have the set of deliverables that we're going to provide to you, if we make all of those programs, and there's going to, I'll, I'll drill down a little bit, but I'm going to stay pretty high level here, um, all those programs involved in that, if we can put those in a cloud-based environment, you get the, res the advantage of all those intermediate results, all those potentially large files that are generated, they're in a, a single storage solution, and you can choose to actually extend the storage for as long as you want if you want to keep your data up there. Um, and that can help in just having that central location for your collaborators to come in. They may want to share some of this data with somebody else. But there's another thing is now those tools are optimized for the cloud environment. You have your own personal playground. You can go in there and be like, okay, I want to want to rerun this with a different set of um, parameters. Maybe I have a different annotations for genes that I would like to look at. So I'll show you a little bit about how this is enabled. And then finally, it's a good hub for breaking out to these tertiary analysis tools. And then I'll also, as I go through each one of these, give you an idea of what uh, we also add by just having this cloud enabled. We can build on that and focus on the strengths of both cloud and desktop based solutions. Okay, so Joel mentioned the deliverables that we are uh, going to provide in the solution. They're going to be produced by the secondary analysis pipeline on the cloud. If you've been attending talks these last couple days, I'm sure you've seen a lot of these pipeline oriented things. They have lots of you know, diagrams, and as Joel mentioned, there can be a lot of uh, complexity to it. So let me just start with the high level, um, and as we are optimizing and verifying and adding new things to it, there may be more pieces of uh, software that go into these boxes. 
but this is kind of a, from the conceptual phase, the, the, the basic components. You start with your FASTQ files, you're going to be filtering those down, there's going to be reads that you don't need to be looking at because they don't pass quality filters or they don't um, align to the proper genomes. You're going to be aligning it, doing quantification to get that transcript abundance, and then you're doing that on the single sample level, and to get to you to the point where you have something for going into a tertiary tool, we'll join all those samples together into a nice tabular format. So there may be hundreds of programs out there that may fit into each one of these boxes. We're taking care of that for you. We're making sure that we can validate those and make them in a high throughput cloud environment where we can uh, make sure that they're not going to you know, break halfway through, et cetera. So this is something that we're, we're, we're putting together to make sure that it's uh, the analysis and that standard deliverable as well as coming back and looking at each of those components is, is pretty straightforward. So what does this end up looking like from, the, from your perspective, right? You get this notification that your sequencing is done. Your standard deliverable is being computed. You get an email with a link saying, it. Hey, here's your results. Here's your results. So in the end, we're going to provide as much detail as you'd like to drill down here. But at the end, there's going to be all the information about what actually ran, how long it took, some of the intermediate files. The point is, from here, you can drill down as much as you'd like, but you could also just jump right in and grab that translated cell file or download that tabular quantified um, uh, the quantification at the, re at the gene or the transcript level and then you can pull it into tertiary analysis tools or just use this as a staging area while you bring in more samples and then do some more analysis. So it's going to be a pretty straightforward interface. But like I said, it's not just about receiving data, it can also be about going in and asking more questions. And without having to, and you may also be thinking about, okay, well I get six samples today and I, I, I ran the deliverable and hey, maybe I'm getting some more samples in six months or 12 months from now. The pace of things going, we're going to maintain this as the best of breed uh, methods and, and continue to use EA's expertise to uh, make sure that there's that high validity and being able to reproduce these, um, uh, these reads on a, on a technical level. Um, so you may want to come back and rerun samples that you've, you've stored before um, so you can compare those samples in the same group. It's very important to make sure you're doing all this in the same computational pipeline when you, when you go down to the level of um, doing the differential expression type experiments. So with that kind of in mind, we're also building this as this, uh, this uh, platform for rerunning analysis. And your inputs are there, your, your starting points are there, you can select the steps that you would like to rerun, you can s configure some of the parameters, you can choose your inputs, and again, it's going to be the same type of experiment, experience. Once you hit go, you'll be notified, yep, your results are ready, and those results can be used um, back into all these other steps that we'll go into now. So that's kind of the idea, and again, this may be single sample oriented, but one of the things I didn't have a chance to tell you yet, is the other advantage of being on this cloud-based environment is, you know, as you can imagine, hundreds of, um, hundred thousand or a thousand times more data that you're working with on the microarray type platforms can take quite a lot, long time to process through this, right? So. If you have a single sample, let's say maybe it takes six hours. Well, whoops, let's switch back up. Trigger happy with the keyboard there. And there's Joel's slides. I'll get back in here. Thank you very much. All right, so if you have a single sample that might take six hours, um, 100 samples is you're gonna take six hours. A thousand samples probably just take six hours, right? We can use that elastic nature of the cloud environment, fire up as many machines as we need to, pile them all through at the same time, bring the results back together. Um, so there's, there's that, that advantage as well, and if you're thinking about handling this type of data on your local compute cluster and waiting in line, you immediately know what that advantage means in, in real turnaround time. So focused a little bit down at the level of the cloud analysis and, and pulling back up, let's go into some of these tertiary analysis tools. Some of these are, are tools that um, you, can, you can look on, that you can use if you'd like to, to and, and they're not necessarily going to be forcing you to use these tools, but I can show you that this is going to make all of those steps to get from that input file to that biological significance under one roof extremely straightforward and familiar. 
So the analytics that we're going to, to, to build for running this type of differential expression on this data, we can take advantage of what Golden Helix has been doing for the last 13 years. We've been building um, our flagship, flagship product, uh, SNP and Variation Suite 7, has a lot of these uh, very extremely useful core features to utilize here. We have data management capabilities. Anybody who's done a number of experiments knows that one of the uh, one of those limiting factors is you have data in format A and B and C, and you just need to be able to bring them all together and, and do that sort of normalization of the data. We handle that very well. We have all these robust statistics that we've built into our platform, visualization tools, and scripting, and extension. And all these base features are accessible through experiment-specific modules. So our software allows you to say, hey, if I'm going to be doing this type of experiment, this type of experiment, let's just choose those modules. I don't need anything else. That's fine. We have modules for SNP-based and CMB-based association analysis, uh, RNA-seq rare variant analysis, and now we're adding to that the RNA analysis that is going to be designed specifically to support this via the workflows coming out of the secondary analysis pipeline. So really what it's going to come down to is your data is in this cloud environment. You can open up SVS. You put in your credentials, and essentially with a click or two, you have that tabularized format data in a familiar spreadsheet interface. And from here, you can do all kinds of analysis based on our platform. But let's just walk through a couple of the very familiar things you might do. We're going to pull up a differential expression analysis tool here. This is DEseq. And it's actually not just your regular um, test statistics that you might run on a microarray. It's going to take into account the, the variance uh, and the types of uh, behaviors of this type of data um, versus just standard intensity-based data coming off of a microarray. So really, you just need to choose your groups. And the output is going to be that familiar p-value and log full change statistics. You can pull them up into uh, a visualization to, to visualize some of those results. And this is actually the breast cancer data that Joel was using for his, um, his portion of the talk. And so here we're looking at the combined base means and fold change. You could also do a volcano plot of your fold change versus your p-values. You can already see this. Um, the uh, some genes started to, 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 to peak out here as they um, kind of pull away from the, the, the grouping. And, and so you might go from here to uh, filtering down to this list of genes that are interesting for uh, further analysis. So this is kind of your standard uh, expression-based workflow. But what about all that extra stuff? What about that stuff that Joel was showing you? So you take that gene list, and now you can just throw it into a um, well, what we're going to do is show you a couple of, of, of ways you can, you can go on further from there. So again, pulling back up, we're looking at our tertiary analysis. We did some differential expression. We were able to pull up an interesting list of genes, maybe actually um, filter those based on a couple of these criteria coming out of statistics. And what you really uh, need to be able to pull some more of this data out is to go back to some of that alignment data, right? It's going to be cumbersome. It's uh, tens of hundreds of gigabytes of data, and you don't necessarily want to download that to your machine and pull it up in IGB and then have it crash and then rebuild your align, you know, your uh, indexing and your coverage. It can be quite uh, a hassle to deal with that data. And we realized to give you that insight to be able to jump to those genes immediately and, and get that feedback, we need to make this an integrated experience. So we're building our genome browser to take all that data that's still cloud-based and visualize it, stream it on demand. And we're going to do all the pre-computations we need to make sure that that happens in a very kind of fluid experience. So here we are, we're zoomed in at the, um, the, uh, at the gene level. And we don't have to necessarily download all these samples to get this to this environment. You can pull in your gene list as sort of a bookmark list and kind of jump through your genes and just look at it. Um, you can already see um, some of the the, the coverage information showing you where those exons are. And, and as we zoom into this uh, exon, I think this is exon 5 of the GTA 3 gene, you can start to see that there's actually that insertion here. And there's that insertion that's heterozygous at this area. So this type of information is very accessible in our genome browser. And not only are we going to make this fluid and be able to be as interactive as possible and pull this data on demand, as you navigate around, you can pull out to the whole genome level, and it's still going to—you know—it's not going to break on you. It's going to still give you as much um, 
contacts as can be aggregated at that level. Here we're just actually aggregating the coverage by strand. We're going to be tweaking this type of visualization to make it as informative as possible. But the point is, with this Geno browser, which is part of the uh, cloud-based solution, it's complementary part built into that cloud-based solution, this desktop Geno browser, you'll be able to access that uh, quantity of data that is sitting on that uh, cloud-based solution without having to deal with just downloading it and, and running it through other genome browsers. So finally, if you want to get to your biological insight, you may be able to find some interesting things at the alignment level. You may have some pretty solid test statistics that you've verified by looking through some of the profiles of your um, expression at the alignment level. But there's always those extra steps and we want to make sure we can support the full chain under this uh, solution. So this cloud-based solution offers us an, an opportunity to collaborate with other third-party um, providers. And so in this case, what we're going to do is hook in Ingenuity's uh, expertise and their uh, large database of curated publications and all that extra uh, work they do on the pathway side. And I'm not sure if, if, how many of you have actually seen this product yet, but it's been announced this month. It's an early access. It's an absolutely fabulous thing to, to play with. And it's called Ingenuity iReport. And we're going to have this as an integrated part of our solution. Again, it's another value-added component that you're, you can absolutely use. And this is the, the beginning of their interface. It's kind of broken down into chapters. You can see at the top, this wheel-type interface takes all the uh, input from the differential expression that you may run and they actually support it in multiple different stages, but in this case we would provide them with the differential expression that you're coming out of the, um, the cloud-based or SVS-based analysis solution. And I mean, I could spend a lot of time talking about this because it's pretty cool, but basically it's a very interactive experience. As you select from both the outside and the inside um, um, ways of grouping the gene and pathways, you can create these essentially automatically filter down to the areas of interest and then you get a lot of cataloging information changing about that. You have your standard ways of visualizing the pathways that have the overlay of the uh, full change in p-value data that is brought in. So you can kind of get to this, this great biological insight and it's on more of a um, experiment level uh, process as opposed to having to download a, a desktop application to use this. So this will be a cloud-based solution. It's essentially a, a web interface that we would integrate with. So I was able to summarize this as saying we, we are very excited about this solution. We think that it's going to um, accelerate this adoptance and being able to access this data in a very familiar and fluid and easy way. As much as, it is, as you like is at your fingertips. There's the extra information that, um, that Joel was able to show is there. We can now provide through a couple different tertiary analysis tools, as well as the ability to rerun stuff in the secondary analysis pipeline. 